it's that time again when the Powerpuff Pals share with you right from their discussion space. So, call your family, call your friends, gather around this channel because here at the Powerpuff Pals discussion space, we leave no stones unturned. Yes, we take you to the heart of our conversation. Join us now as we discuss current topics that affects each and every one of our lives. Stay tuned. PPP. What is PPP? From our discussion space, we call ourselves the Power Puff Pals. And we're so happy for the privilege one more time to join you, our listeners, in discussing a very pointed, very deliberate topic that we think that you all can benefit from and even for us here. And so we are very excited to bring to our discussion space this evening the whole idea, the topic of finances, finance in the family. How do we plan? How do we navigate our way through spending? Um, do we go and buy what we need every time we need it? And here the Power of Pals will share with you our idea as to how we see your spending. But before we go into our topic, um, our viewers, we're asking you to subscribe to this channel. And for those who are family members of the Power of Pals family, we always welcome you to this discussion space. And if you know of anyone that would benefit from this topic or these topics that we're discussing, please take time to share the channel with them so that they too can benefit. And the PALs are here again, ready and charged up to discuss the topic for today. PAL Kadian, PAL George, finances in the family. May I just go first this week? May I just take the, 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 the baton this week? Go I ahead. But financially, I am not well, I'm not able, I am not ready. But I know that I do have my part to play in this topic of finances. It was just yesterday my husband looked at me and said, you need to save. You need to save. And I gave him all the reasons, pals, why I cannot save. But, ladies, finances in the family, how do you see that topic? And how relevant it is to us today? Kalian, George. All right, so finances, it has always been a touchy topic. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is there is something called a shortage of resources. And it's something that all of us face. In other words, no matter how wealthy we are, you never ever have enough to take care of all your needs. Mm. And so the management of your resources um, is very important. Right. Um, in fact, I think research can show that most persons that lack of financial contri um, management contributes highly to the high divorce rate in our families. Yes, because people quarrel most about money. Mm -hmm. And because money is what we use to meet our needs. And uh, people have varying views on money, you know. Um, there are some people who say that you must have, the love of money is the root of evil, you know, that, that's what they say the bad is. But the truth is that we need money in, in this world to survive. Um, and so I want to start off by, on the one principle that I've always lived my life on, and that principle is never to spend more than you earn. Mm -hmm. um, and the truth is that a lot of us spend more than we earn. And that's because we don't accept our financial position where we are mm -hmm. and live in that concept. So you can't work $100 a week and try to live like somebody who works $1,000 a week. If you do that, you are going to get yourself in trouble. Mm -hmm. You can't eat the same kind of food that a person who earns that $1,000 per week eats. You're going to get yourself in trouble. And, you know, my husband always says that a belly full is a belly full. Mm -hmm. So if I eat mackerel and banana or I eat lobster 
or something expensive, at the end of the day, both our bellies will be full. And we're going to get the same result, which is a full stomach. Um, and so that's what I want to start off first by encouraging persons to live within your means. Um, the second principle that um, I'd like to encourage is to, to, to save in fact to living within your means and people say but I don't borrow but we use it for a credit card and credit card is boring and uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 22 that the rich rules over the poor and the borrower becomes a slave mm. to the person who lends as long as you're borrowing you are always going to be a slave mm. to the person who you are lending mm. who you are borrowing from and that's why the bank smiles now it's, it's Christmas time coming up and they smile a lot because they know that people are going to extend themselves. Um, and they know that people are going to be born because everybody wants to be in the festivity. Everybody wants to be, be excited. So when you, when you borrow, the truth is that you always put yourself at a disadvantage because you are always tied to that lender. You're always tied to that person. You want to move on, but you can't move on at any point. Um, and that's why banks, like to lend because they know that when they lend you mm-hmm. they get to hold on to you yeah. and as i said the second thing is that i would encourage everyone to save so you might say i don't have anything to save that is a lie from the devil mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you can always save mm-hmm. the problem is that we we like to think that we have to save a certain amount right but all time people say that ever make a make a mucker mm-hmm. whatever that means in right. Um, simply that you must all, you must save some um, and what I always tell persons that saving does for you is that save, saving puts you at a different level because every time that you have saving what you have is collateral saving provides collateral for you right so that $350 in 10 years time will become $3,600 yeah. and I, I'd like to think in US dollars <laughs> I love that. Perhaps. <laughs> I know who used to work. I know who used to work in Berlin. You know, would, would, would have benefited from that. Great. Right. <laughs> or pound, you know. Yeah. Um, but the truth is that it adds up. Yeah. And so I'm not telling anybody to pressure yourself. I'm just saying, be realistically, you're mm-hmm. in Jamaica, the average person, you're the, let's use the lowest paid person. The mm-hmm. average person gets $5,000 per week. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of money. But if you ban your belly, you can save five hundred dollars a week. Five hundred dollars too saved. much, Georgian. Come on, man. Five hundred dollars. No, but I'm telling you that if the same person take five hundred dollars out of that money and they go to KFC because they say I must have KFC and they eat the KFC and they don't even fill their belly and mm-hmm. their five hundred dollars less goes yeah. away and that same five hundred dollars could buy um, three or four pieces of chicken that could prepare a meal for their family. So it's about management of your money. Amen, amen. Palkadian, let us hear the burst of what you have there on finances. (laughs) Boy, um, as um, Georgette was speaking, all I could think about is that money makes the world go round. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what um, it is. uh, It is the, 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 the... the statement says mm-hmm. and um love can't buy buy, buy can't carry go a shop <laughs> mm-hmm. so essentially um having money is 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 uh, definitely um important and um, um planning for the future as George was um saying is also very important yeah. um, having that savings towards rainy day or emergency um, is very much important and even the bible um, has uh, several things to say about it um, it talks about uh, um, it says wealth in proverbs 13 verse 10 is Verse 11, it says, wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. So, um, yes, money is important, but uh, if it is gotten under questionable circumstances mm-hmm. or then it shall be diminished. But if it is gathered um, 
by labor, then it shall increase. Mm. So just to support what George had said, uh, you know, even though it may seem like a small amount that uh, you're able to save, um, you should uh, still go ahead uh, and save it. You will be surprised how much it will be over a period of time. Mm. Um, saying that I'm reminded of a story about this lady. I don't remember it um, fully, but uh, it happened that she was in a negative situation and uh, she was now not able to afford the rent that uh, they had to pay. So she had to now get a um, seek out a, a rental where they, she had to share um, space with someone else with her child and uh, she realized uh, at one day that uh, um, she wasn't able to either get food or get a diaper for the child and it hurt her so much that she said to herself that this will never happen again mm. and uh, she found uh, a job like a minimal um, paid job but she decided that they are going to um, sacrifice now in order, just sacrifice. And uh, so they just, they did not um, get anything extra. They only got enough that they needed uh, to survive for the day. And as I said, they sacrificed this to the point where they shared um, room or house with another person just to get by. And she decided she was going to save. And she said she opened this account uh, that um, didn't have her name on it, but like over a few years. And uh, she just kept, you know, sending, sending that money. Anyway, um, over a period of time, she decided, you know, at the time, you know, they still couldn't buy the KFC or those things. And uh, she went to the bank now to find out uh, what was going on with that uh, um, account. When she went, she realized that she saved seventy thousand US dollars. Oh, Amen. And uh, the um, bank persons, they were so excited when she came because it was uh, like uh, she gave a name. It wasn't a person's name, but like a. Uh, a name she gave the account and so nobody knew who this person was so when she mm -hmm. came there and when she saw the seventy thousand dollars earned the balance she was like no my name um this is the account i'm looking for xyz and i said no this is it you know it was one thing so the essence of it is that um, pay um sacrificing now for later does um pay and as um, George Ed says that um, properly managing our monies is so important. Mm -hmm. There are things that we don't need. Um, not saying that you're going to deprive yourself and of certain necessities, uh, but there are certain things that we don't need. And if we look at it too, we, we actually waste money. Mm -hmm. um, and things, you know, unnecessary things. For example, persons who smoke, uh, um, cigarettes are so expensive. And uh, if they are doing a pack a day every day, you know how much money that is uh, for the year. And uh, sometimes uh, we go and we see these shoes and we see this bag and it's not that the shoes that we're wearing break up or something, or the bag as a tear and we do things dropping out of it. But we just see the thing and we want it. And we spend and we spend and we become slaves to the, 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 the persons. Mm -hmm. um, but it is for us to recognize that, you know, um, money is important, but we also have to be wise in terms of how we use it. <laughs> because um, there is also this story about uh, um, this gentleman who, this rich man who, you know, had... Um, the store the store house, house. Mm -hmm. expecting to gain much more and he was wondering where he's going to put it and he's um decided oh he's going to break down the current storehouse and build a, a larger one to accommodate for the future 
and he, it was ex, um, revealed to him that you know how foolish he was because you know he's you know life would basically be taken and somebody else will take over all this hard work and you know they may as well squander it so essentially i would um say yes so save um but do not um ignore your responsibilities yes to your your family do not um ignore the poor um do not ignore those who are in need um don't store it up for yourself i know of persons who their intention is to be rich and that is their focus um is that good or is that bad i have uh, no thoughts regarding it but the point of the matter is uh, we should ensure that as we strive to gain as we strive to save for the future that uh, we are also you know working on the soul of ours so mm -hmm. because we're not sure about tomorrow um we have to live uh, every day as if it is the last Amen. do the good that we do stay in connection um with god but yes be wise in terms of saving to um provide for um in preparation for amen tomorrow. amen amen am i hearing the word budgeting coming out of this discussion um pals proper budgeting um from both parties who are involved in a household proper budgeting to make sure that when all is said and done and little is here for savings, a little bit for your tithing, a little bit for food, a little bit for the various things that we want to do. I might hear the word budgeting. Some persons out there might not even be able to budget properly because they know their monthly responsibility or their yearly or their, their weekly responsibility. But how can one, how can a husband, a wife, a, a single person, a single mother or a person who is in charge of a family, how can they seriously budget to benefit from their pay that they get um, each month? All right. Um, so I have personally, I have to do budgeting all the time because I own a business. And I think <laughs> I've been living on my own for a long time. As a matter of fact, I tell persons, I remember when I was 16, I was living with my sister and she had us. And she was our older sister and she was the one taking care of her expenses to go to school. And it was just too much for her. So she would give me her pay. When the salary came, she said, Judge, you take care of it. You ensure all the bills are paid. So I think I learned budgeting from I was 16. That's nice. Um, but one of the things that I learned was that I had to sit down and I had to make a list of all the expenses. So, and I had to start by priority. And priority is your rent. Mm -hmm. You can't go buy food and you don't pay your rent. Because mm -hmm. you need somewhere to live. If you see outside right now, George, if you see outside right now, you don't even understand about it for one minute. Exactly. So, so food. even if you have no food, you mm -hmm. want to ensure your rent is paid, mm -hmm. right? You want to look at um, food because food is next, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you want to look at your, your your utilities. And then you have to ask yourself, you know, what are the utilities that if you cut off, can I do without? Mm -hmm. So you can't do without electricity in Canada because the time cold. Mm -hmm. But we could probably do without electricity. If my light went away, I could light a candle, I could light a yes. lamp. Um, so in, in budgeting, realistically, I would look and say, boy, I may not be able to afford the light bill this month. But nobody will know. I can put on when night coming. If my light turn off, nobody would know if it's light gone anyway. So mm -hmm. I can light my lamp, and I can make do until another month. Mm -hmm. You make a list of all the things um, that you have, and when you do it, you realize that you may not have enough money to cover all the expense. So you have to go back again a second time and say, "All right, what can I cut off? Mm -hmm. What can I delete from the list that is not as important?" You know, as um, Kalyan said. A lot of times we spend on things that we don't need. Mm -hmm. And I think COVID-19 showed me that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, for example, I used to go every year and shop, um, buy new clothes. You just don't use them. And we were home for two years. I haven't bought any clothes in two years. Um, mm -hmm. I still have clothes. I have shoes. 
dry or thin and me mm. <laughs> you understand so you spend a lot of money that you don't need to spend that's the first thing um the other thing is forget impulsive buying there are some people who buy oh, oh, anything they say they want to buy and i say, i don't care i love it i don't care where the money coming from i'm gonna buy you must never impulsively buy you must have a plan as to how much money you are spending how much money you can afford to spend and when you are going to cut off um so that, that's just basic budgeting is not a hard thing budgeting is making a list of all the things you know you must spend for in the month um and then putting the money beside it to see if you have enough money and if you don't have enough money then crossing out some of the things and say boy you don't need this cross it off the list cross it off the list the second thing about budgeting is that people must understand at this time of the year a lot of us get bonus at this time of the year if we don't get bonus people give us something probably somebody send 100 us dollars or somebody send mm. 50 us dollars or um that's money that we're not used to getting mm. and i always tell persons anything that you're not used to getting you can save it because they never expect it anyway mm-hmm. um we tend once we get extra money to go shopping and buy extra things so, don't mm-hmm. need those extra things that money is added bonus um mm-hmm. and the bible says that he will supply all our needs he expects us to be faithful um mm-hmm. in what he provides us because first and foremost of before anything we are stored man was made stored over the earth so we are stewards of everything that the Lord gives us. If we waste it, we are sinning. Mm-hmm. If we hoard it, we are sinning. There are some people who will die of hunger, but then put every, all the money they work in savings. Mm-hmm. There are some people who don't give away anything to anybody they are mean. Mm-hmm. Um, because they are busy getting rich. Yeah. Right? And so you have to strike that balance. You have to understand that whatever you are blessed with that the lord has given it to you to manage mm-hmm. um and that he expects you to manage responsibly it can be for example when we start having children we know they are going to go to high school we know they are going to university it can't be that we we'll wait until we're in university time come we start wondering how we're going to pay for university it has to be a deliberate act okay mm-hmm. so it, it has to be deliberate. It has to be deliberate from the, the start. I always open a bank account for my baby from their one year old. Mm-hmm. Um, and I start off with a saving of a thousand dollars per month for them. Not a lot of money, but they, it adds up over the years. Eighteen years. Um, mm-hmm. Eighteen years of a thousand dollars add up. Yeah. Right. Um, and while it may not be able to pay their school fees, God helps those who help themselves. Mm-hmm. And if you can say to somebody, I have the first school, this the first year school fee, yeah, somebody yeah. will step in. Mm-hmm. Or I have a half of it, somebody is a boy, this child have ambition or this parent had ambition, let me help to send their child to school. But if you say, boy, I don't have anything. Mm-hmm. And they turn around and say, but where were you all these 18 years? What were you doing all these 18 years? Because the child didn't just grow up overnight. Yeah. So the Lord expects us to put things in place to assist us, especially those of us who who are blessed to have a job because my experience over the years is that it's not people who earn a lot of money who save. Mm-hmm. There's not how much you earn, it's so how much you I save out of what you work, mm-hmm. right? There are persons who, I mean, I have in my field, I've seen persons come and buy property cash and they're office helpers, they're farmers, Mm-hmm. you know um they diligently save because their ambition one day is to own something for themselves mm-hmm. um and there are some who believe in big starts so if we can't buy the house of our dream right away we don't want to buy something at all. Mm-hmm. start with something Amen. always tell people all get a start put your foot in and start with something and we'll go on to bigger things Amen. um <clears throat> Well said, Georgette. <laughs> um, just to add uh, um, to what Georgette said, uh, um, is something that I'm, I'm seeing here um, where it says that a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children. So children, um, yeah. this is from Proverbs 13, uh, 22. Oh. Oh. Um, so... It is a 
some persons don't see the, the, the relevance of this. We see this more in certain cultures that they do um, prepare for the next generation. Um, but uh, we are seeing that it is something that God are, you know, it is recommended that we do. We have to think, uh, um, we can't say, oh, because we did not get it or had that opportunity that we are not going to um, provide that opportunity for our children as well. And so we need to work in such a way and save in such a way in, prepare, in preparing them um, preparing for the next generation um, so that they, if we when struggled in our lives, then uh, they do not struggle um, when they are, they are next, <laughs> when they, they go on their own. Mm-hmm. And so um, being diligent in our spending, um, hard work is very important as well. Um, so even, you know, some persons may not have a or have a skill have a um they say a university or a college um degree or they may not be um earning a lot so to speak you know we have to now find ways um that we can earn um so as to to meet the demands because the reality is uh, things are getting uh, um, more and more expensive. Um, somebody was sharing with me how they took up a basket of grocery, which is the regular thing that they usually um, buy, and it is costing like a hundred um, Canadian dollars. And usually that could have um, purchased uh, a trolley, <laughs> a trolley of things. Uh, and even here in Jamaica, we are seeing the rise in prices as well. And so the call is basically for us to be a little bit more creative in terms of finding um, other ways um, in addition to our jobs, so to speak, to earn. Um, Many persons have gone to YouTube, many persons have to on another skill um, in order to earn extra. And it is for us to, find uh, um, ways, uh, um, legal ways to earn, um, to, so, to provide for ourselves and our family. Because uh, the Bible also tells that if uh, the man does not provide for his family, he is um, an infidel. And so Worse we can't- Worse than an infidel. <laughs> Worse <laughs> than <laughs> Worse than an infidel. So we have to, mm-hmm. Especially when we have children, we have to find um, ways in order to um, provide for ourselves and our family. Mm -hmm. So planning, budgeting, um, being creative, uh, putting away our side pride. Um, I always said that uh, um, if things got bad, (laughs) I wouldn't have had um, too much pride to to sell things uh, and, uh, you know, graduate from there um so sometimes we have to you know just find other um ingenious ways if you can cook your cook you know just go through the different things and get your license to cook um your license to be able to operate a food place if you can do here or you're good at barbering or you're good at gardening or you're good at whatever it is um get up and do it Right, don't sit down and expect miracles to happen. As George says, um, the Lord helps who help themselves. We have to at least make uh, the effort and uh, God will bless it. And when God blesses us, we have to also remember to return um, our faithful tithes, uh, trusting God uh, to provide for us the next month. Amen. Right. Amen. So my pals, um, there is a there is a term called spendthrift, right? Pal George and Celia. There's a, a term called spendthrift. I don't know if it's a legal term or it's a term that you find anywhere in any book or wherever. 
But in your short one line, who do you think is eccentric? Let me see if me fall into that space right now. Who do you think is eccentric? <laughs> Just one line of how you think who is eccentric. A person who just can't bypass anything without spending. Mm -hmm. They just have to spend. And that involves spending what they don't have either, right? Of course. Uh, I, I'm, 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 yeah. I met a lady. She said to me, she said, I have a real problem. I said, what do you mean? She said, I just like to spend. She said, if I go to a store and I see something that I like, even if I do, I have, I have it at home already. But I like it again. She said, I will have my mortgage mm -hmm. and I will spend it. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, she says, if you go to my house right now, I have packages of new things that I've never ever used. Because I just see things, I just like them, and I I just buy yeah. them yeah. all the time. And I said to her, You have a real problem. Mm -hmm. Because that means that she'll get herself in trouble. Because that is somebody who is definitely living above their means. If you have your mortgage money, that that is supposed to secure your roof over your head and the over the head of your children and your family, and you can't control yourself enough to say I'm not going to buy that, you still. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, but and, it's like and, I was saying, like it's like the hoarding persons, you know, them just not to hoarding, like they gambling. Huh? There's like an addiction. Mm -hmm. But what they say that um, you find that mostly among persons who didn't have it when they were growing up. Mm -hmm. And so they, not the gambling necessarily, but the persons who go out and buy. That's what somebody had told me. Like if they didn't have it, know that they have it, they have to get it. It's not like a need, you know, but it's that like they're proving <laughs> something. So I'm not really sure. I think it's there's a mental thing behind it. Mm -hmm. Especially okay, so if it's so oh, you could people. actually you could actually have a spendthrift who can afford to spend, you know. Mm. So they have the so money and that's why they spend the all the time. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But then you also have those who can't help themselves who no matter even if they don't have it. If they have to borrow it, if they have to steal it, if they have to beg it, mm -hmm. if they have to I mean, put themselves in debt, they are going to spend because they can't pass it. And yeah. that is yes. um there is a there is a thing that I, I'm gonna ask the ladies and for listeners out there bear with me, but what about the person who have the money in their account but they will borrow from somebody else because they don't want to go in their account all right um when we come on to finances i always tell persons there are two principles one how you treat how you treat other people's money mm -hmm. right so I have a problem with persons, for example, who will call in somebody to work for them and when they finish work, they say, I can't pay you. Mm -hmm. oh. I have a problem with, 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 with persons. You're touching a topic there. Yes. Like a right. I have a problem with people who borrow other people's money and they have money, their money, bank up. Secure, yeah. You understand? And I have something to tell those people. Mm -hmm. That your money will come to naught. If mm -hmm. you continue to do those things, mm -hmm. God won't bless what you have because mm -hmm. He expects us to be fair and responsible. You can't, mm -hmm. can't be fair. Mm -hmm. How can you be building up yourself and, and caring? And those are the same people who don't want to pay you back either mm -hmm. when they borrow your money and their money earning interest. It, it, it's, it's the same thing that we do when we're supposed to give the Lord His money. We we're supposed to return our tithe and we don't return our tithe and offering. We're stealing from the Lord. And he says that it, it will be like we have holes in our pocket, coal oh, burning out of our out. pocket. Yeah, because out. nothing we touch mm -hmm. is sustainable because we're stealing from him. And when we take money from somebody else and we already have our own money, that's stealing. Mm -hmm. When we borrow on the false pretense, that's stealing. Uh, when we borrow without the intention to repay, you know, you and I were bridging and we said, may I go down to the store, um, Kello, and you and I are in the store and you said, George, just, just pay for this thing and come home. And you know you have no yeah, intention of, yeah. of paying me back my money. Mm. That is stealing. Mm. And people who behave like that, you're calling down curse upon yourself. Your bank will collapse with your money. Mm. 
that the Lord is not pleased about that. And that is why you have some persons, everything they touch mm-hmm. is a problem because they are unfair. Mm-hmm. Ladies, listen to me. I feel like, I, I feel like this is financial hard talk this evening. Like, seriously. <laughs> this is financial hard talk. And I don't know what to say. I am being converted in this discussion process right now. And ladies, I want you to hold me responsible for my future of my, my myself, my spending, and my own financial attitude. I want you to hold me responsible because there are some things that people are professional at and people are good at and people can manage. And there are some things that people can't. And me, right out there, I am struggling right now to balance. But ladies, I'm learning from you. And I hope that you listeners out there are learning the basic principles of financing and how we can govern our financial life for the better. I want to give these ladies the last line to say, but before I do that, must I be, must I understand that if I get a bonus from work at the end of the year, I can save that bonus without even thinking second, a second time that I can put it away and not touch it? Or do I do what I want to do with it to enjoy the year of the hard work that I've given to my company and in to give me that? And secondly, that's one question. The other one is, uh, what about the persons who are really struggling, but you know, like they have to take the bus or taxi every day and they decide to take out a car. Um, so in terms of, instead of paying for the car, they just use the, paying for the bus fare that accumulates they use this amount to pay for the car, but then it puts them in a more financial bind. How do you encourage someone to balance that type of lifestyle as we close? All right, one of the mistakes that a lot of us make is living for today and not planning for the future. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think a lot of us can get away with it when you are single and when you are alone, but when you have children, the things you used to do, you can no longer do. Um, and so you always have to put aside something for them in the case of an emergency. Um, and so I would say you may not you may not be able to afford to keep all the bonus, to save all the bonus, but you should determine to put aside some of it, bearing in mind that you, you could have not gotten that bonus. Right. Um, the second thing I want to say about putting it away is to put it somewhere where you can't reach easily. So don't put it in your regular account because you're going to draw it out every minute. Put it somewhere where it's hard to reach it. You know, you probably have to go to the bank. You probably have to go sign up some paper, you know, fix it. Um, or do a salary deduction where you don't have any control over it that it comes out automatically um for you as i say again the same long-term issue because um sometimes when you think about a car for example people are thinking about oh all i need to do is to get in the car and buy a gas instead of paying the fare every month but they don't think about insurance they don't think about wear and tear they don't think about if something happens to the car and it is always possible they don't think about the cost of tire the cost of maintenance <laughs> in the long run you know um, and so what you end up with a lot of times is more debt. And, and so I want to go back to the point that I made about living within your means. If a bus you can afford to take, take the bus. It might, is it difficult? Yes, it's difficult. But that's what you can afford at the time. Um, and I like to give you a story. I remember when I graduated from law school, for four months, I, I did not have a job. Could not get a job. And I would go by my sister and babysit. And people say, how could you be a lawyer and babysit? That's the job I could get at the time. And I wanted to be independent. I wanted to be able to buy my own stuff without having to ask my husband. And for me, my money is my money and it doesn't matter how I get it. As long as it's, 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 it's legal, mm-hmm. I am willing to work hard. A lot of us, we, are, we have too much pride and we don't want people seeing us doing certain things and we think we're better than doing some things. A start is better than nothing all the time. Something is better than nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, some people say, I'm not working for $5,000 a week. $5,000 a week is better than $0. Mm-hmm. 
any day, mm-hmm. right? You know, the basic necessities that you you need. And I think that's one of the things we need to start by being, you know, a lot of times we look at other people and we say, oh, they're doing well. They're doing well because they are willing to do what you are not willing to do. They are willing to do, go the extra mile. You know, I remember sitting on my veranda one day and I heard some men passing and having a discussion and they said, because see, where did my eat up at the house, you know? We were eating Kalaloo and bread food, bread food that my husband planted. And people don't understand that those are some of the things that people need to start doing. You need to plant because a bread, I don't even know how much a bread costs, but bread expensive. Um, and if you have to buy five of those per week, well, a bread food could, could, could share for your family four times, right? Um, so some of the things, some of the expenses we have could be could be taken off if we would do some back yard gardening mm. um and if we would simplify our lives yeah. i've learned to simplify my life mm-hmm. and that's a recommendation i want to give people yeah. simplify yeah. your life don't follow the joneses and look and say oh my neighbor has a, a new bench so i need one yeah. right um i bought a cheaper car the other day and i bought because i recognize that i don't need an expensive car i need a reliable car but I also know that I need to put aside my children at a stage where they need to go to university. And that is priority for me. Mm-hmm. So you have to start by identifying what is priority for you. What is it that is your circumstances? You know, I had a boss when my first job, she would say on her door, she had a, had a poster and it said, there are different types of fishes, big fish, little fish, tiki tiki, kingfish. And it named all the different kinds of fishes. And it says, who are you? You need to start by recognizing who you are, what is the position that you're in, and don't compare yourself to others and try to live within that position that you're in until you can go to the next step and to a better step. And you will find that over time you'll move to the next step if you are willing to wait your turn Amen. and your time. Amen. Well, well, uh, my final statement. Um, in trying to re- um, answer your questions. Um, for the first one with, regard- with regards to the bonus, um, it would uh, also boil down to what your priorities are, what it is that you wanted to um, accomplish. Mm-hmm. For example, some persons may want to, are in the process of building or adding to their home. And so these bonuses uh, um, for us as nurses, we usually get um, travel, no, uniform money once a year. So some persons would use that money towards buying blocks and cements uh, in terms of building their home. So it depends on what your your goals are. And as Georgette was saying, um, so you would have to have a plan you would, so that you can prioritize as to what is important and then your focus be on that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it boils down to that. But emphasizing the fact that, yes, a saving is very important. And both right. Things. So mm-hmm. um, with regards to the car, though, um, it depends on what your need is. And uh, I must tell you a joke. Mm-hmm. Um, like last year, I was... Um, like thinking because with the car that I have now it's a small car and I you know two times that I was nearly washed away <laughs> like during the every rain mm-hmm. and I said to myself I, I I cannot continue with this as a car you know you know two times that I think that is more than enough I wanted a, a, a higher car so I was thinking about a forerunner and you know those type of cars because it must be higher <laughs> and you know um since you know things did not plan out as how I want them in terms of work, and so you know I'd basically taken my mind off of it. But somehow yesterday, I was um, brought to this site where they were showing some cars. So I saw the the four runner and I saw if my BMW. So I was like sending to the seller, <laughs> what's the cost? <laughs> Oh, I got the price yesterday, and then so today I was in church and I was thinking to myself, Katie. You're going to talk about, um, you're going to get a BMW. You know that BMW is an vehicle. And then secondly, the maintenance of it, um, it must be killing. The insurance mm-hmm. must be killing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, hell, you can't go, you know. That is like putting your heart way up, you know, yeah, your cap. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that would be right? 
And then I talk about before when I said bigger vehicle, so it must be a bigger engine. So it will take more gas. Going through the toll is like a headache. And I'm like, that is just incurring more expense than what I need at this mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, uh, nothing is wrong with having a transportation, but we have to be realistic. If it is mm-hmm. going to us in debt, then it means that it is not yet the time to purchase mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some jobs, however, that provide a travel, um, mm-hmm. pay for your travel expenses. And so in that case, it would be wise mm-hmm. to get a because it would basically pay for itself through those. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to assess your situation and see what is best for you. Mm-hmm. Because especially so um having your own transportation it's 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 not only mm-hmm. more <laughs> it's more convenient and all these different things and it saves time as well you know so um you have to factor out everything your expenses and what it is you can afford and don't go for the most expensive so don't watch the joneses look for something that is reliable and you know will not cost you a lot when you're thinking about maintenance and insurance gas and if you have to go through that toll mm-hmm. all right um so you know in essence uh, um we there is a we, we usually talk about physical mental and all those different health but they also have now introduced the new term financial health so it is important for us to strive to be financially healthy in terms of making proper plans for the future um only you know if we know that money is scarce focusing on meeting the needs and not necessarily our wants but i also want to add that in saving as well that you don't deprive yourself too much there are times you know we need self-care and you have to remember yourself in that process because sometimes we are saving for you know the rainy day and we put ourselves at a disadvantage we don't buy the food that is um nutritious um we we deprive ourselves so much and so we have to really um be wise in our our efforts as well make sure that we're eating healthily right um the shoes that we have on you know it won't fall off right yes we're planning for the future but we need to ensure that we have good shoes so sometimes you tend to want to buy the cheaper things but they may not be the best and we end up buy more of it over a period of time because it you know it's damaged quicker so sometimes you just invest in something that is good which will last a longer time um that is a good shoes a good suit Make sure you have a multiple of it so you can mismatch, mix match. <laughs> Nobody will know. And even if they want to know and point it out, it is yours, right? Amen. <laughs> it's not yours. Amen. Right? Um, yes, yeah, so just be wise. Amen. Ladies, Georgette, I'm going to ask you to pray for us, financially pray for us. But I'm leaving with the thought of um, waiting your turn. Wait your turn to get there financially. Don't force write the process and don't borrow to, to get there or put yourself in debt to get there, but wait your turn to get there financially. I'm hearing the word simplify your life, simplify your life so that it, you don't take on extra expenses and then just make it become a problem to you and your family and the, the, the well-being of your family. Um, yesterday, I went to the thrift store and I bought two pairs of shoes for my daughter, two new pair of shoes. And those shoes did not cost me $8. Brand new pair of shoes. If you're living in a place where a thrift store is, be sure to use that medium because trust me, you get some really good, durable, nice stuff in a thrift store that will not even look like it's something that you didn't buy at your brand new place. So look out for these. Yes, I'm saying it's the things that are at thrift store. It's not like... It's usually brands that persons yeah. that invite and they cook them or and they donate but... it, right? Yeah, and then they well, donate it, yeah. So just people like the trip name. definitely. And um, for example, you might be baking for this season, this Christmas season. If you want to share with someone the um the items, 
share with a friend that you're close to and both of you can put together and be and then you would mind that have to spend so much so there are ways that you can plan mentally to get there financially but at the end of the day god is expecting us to be responsible we close off in prayer Jordan. okay i encourage my listeners to really really bear these tips in mind as you go through this period of spending and your financial wellness as katie and us today yes Jordan. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful, Lord, for just the opportunity to be alive. We recognize that with life comes hope, and with hope we have a future. You, Lord, have already said that you have a good plan for our future. And so, Lord, we pray, Lord, that we will depend more on you, that we will listen to you, that we will be inspired by you. Lord, help us to be faithful in managing what you have given us, Lord. Help us be better stories. Help us to be mindful that you love a cheerful giver. Help us to share with others what you have blessed us with, Lord. And Lord, we pray that we will be good representatives of you, that we will not hoard and try to build up new things when others are beside us suffering. Lord, we ask that you are creating us uh, that balance that we need, that balance that we need to survive in this world, recognizing that you're coming soon, recognizing that difficult times are ahead of us, but understanding that our future is secure with you. Mm -hmm. Lord, you said that you have never seen the righteous or sweet like bread, and so we have that assurance that you will always be your provider. We pray for those, Lord, who can't help but spend we pray lord that you will help them to hold back mm -hmm. that you will help them to <clears throat> put aside something for themselves put aside something for others put aside you know and to have the, the, the that kind of thing them to give away those things that they keep buying and putting down that they don't use mm -hmm. um because all you promise to bless those who bless others mm -hmm. and help us lord more than anything else lord to be fair to others not to live above our means Mm -hmm. Not to borrow while we hoard our own, not to take from others without giving. Mm -hmm. And finally, Lord, we pray that we will come to know you personally because I believe that through knowing you, by reading your words, Lord, we'll come to have a balance in our life. Help us to create that balance that we need, that financial balance, Lord. Thank you so much because we believe that all things that we ask you, that you'll hear us. And those things we fail to ask the Lord, fail not to grant it unto us, you know that we need them. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As usual, we here at the Power of Pal discussion space, we leave no stones unturned. And we try to give you all the topics that we've discussed straight from our heart and more so our God and our feeling. Until we meet in this space again, I wish you, our listeners, a wonderful day. And listen, take care of your finances now so it can take care of you. And remember to subscribe, share, like this channel. And if you are not a Christian, a practicing Christian that knows about tithing, try to put some money in that tithe envelope and return it to the church and see what God can do for you. He can turn things around only if you give from your heart. Until we meet yeah. again, have a good day.